Hey, this is Justin again, and I just want to thank you all for tuning in. Since the video I made last week, I've been getting questions from people in the TRT and hormone optimization group. Also, I've seen some of the messages on the YouTube channel in the comments section, and I just want to clarify the air. So this week's question is, what is subclinical hypothyroidism, and should we treat it? This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. So unlike what we are often referred to as primary hypothyroidism, or in the classic sense, hypothyroidism, that's characterized by TSHs that are higher than 10, well, most of the literature supports that a TSH higher than 10 constitutes run-of-the-mill hypothyroidism. Now, the TSH is elevated in association with a low free T3 and a low free T4. So a lot of the literature actually says, hey, the TSH is high. And then what they typically do is they'll add on a free T4 and see if that's low. That's, quote-unquote, the standard of care literature. Now, what is subclinical hypothyroidism? Subclinical hypothyroidism is where the TSH is marginally elevated, but you really don't see a lot of reflective changes in the free T3 or the free T4. Why is that, you may ask? Well, a lot of times in subclinical hypothyroidism, it's actually occurring during the evolution of the disease itself. So the patient's TSH is slowly, 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 slowly climbing. However, it's not to the point that there's reflective changes observed in the free T3 or the free T4. Some of the literature actually supports, and I'm fully on board with this, that if you have a TSH above a 2.5, 2.5, then you should do a workup to further consider and evaluate whether this patient actually has subclinical hypothyroidism or not. Many traditional, aka conventional providers will say, well, you know, your TSH is 3 or 3.2, whatever, you're good. Some will even go so far as to see a 4.4, 4.5, <clears throat> <clears throat> and will say, hey, it's still within normal parameters. We'll think of it this way, just like with TRT, what if you have somebody with a total test of 400. Okay, the person still has the whole constellation of symptoms, you know, poor fatigue, horrible crippling brain fog, uh, poor libido, joints ache, can't recover, etc, etc, etc. Well, same goes with when you manage and or evaluate hypothyroidism. So say if your TSH is, you know, let's say it's four. Okay, by conventional standards, you're quote unquote normal. Now we want to add on free T3 free T4, and we need to evaluate the patient if they're actually having symptoms. Is the patient symptomatic? That's one of the most important questions. And if they are, hmm, uh, that may be a con consideration for treatment. Now, personally, I go by roughly 2, 2.5 range for the TSH, and uh, some of the new emerging literature is actually in support of that, and I am fully on board with that as well. I've been practicing that way for several years now. So say if i got a patient that comes in, this patient's TSH, let's say it's two and a half, okay? And the free T3, free T4 are kind of on the marginally low, low normal side, and they're symptomatic. Sure, I'd say that they're worthwhile giving a trial with treatment. Now, by classic standards, subclinical hypothyroidism is a TSH that's somewhere between 4.5 and less than 10, but the free T3, free T4 are still considered to be within normal parameters. Well, what's the problem with that is that this person is having, like I said, they're actually in the evolution of developing full-blown overt hypothyroidism. It just hasn't fully manifested in their blood work. So why wouldn't you treat this patient? Mm, by conventional standards, you wouldn't treat this patient till they come fully overt. Me, personally, I believe that I'm not the type that's going to just sit here and say, oh, let's just wait till they're fully symptomatic, their hair's crumbling, they're constipated, they're fully depressed, 
They're, they have hypogonadism secondary to hypothyroidism. They're hyperprolactinemic at that point. No, I'm not going to wait till they have the full amalgamation of symptoms. I'm going to proactively treat this patient, and I want to try to get them feeling better, better, far, far before they actually feel horrible, and it's hard to dig them out of that hole. So I just want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this short five-minute video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section. Uh, hit me up on Facebook. Give me some, give me some uh, ideas for next week's video. Appreciate you. And now do this next. Click on one of these thumbnails to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization.